גומורן שרה ונר. I did it. So, uh, good morning. I'm so happy uh, to be here with you. And it's a great honor uh, for me to address here uh, today. And uh, I would like to say, first of all, thank you, my dear friends. And uh, till now, we had a great uh, time. And also, I would like to welcome our ambassador, Rafi. And this is an opportunity to thank you for all your amazing uh, work. And uh, in the last three years, I sent you thousands of emails and phone calls. Rafi, 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 Rafi. What will be between our two countries, Norwegian and Israel? I got the mandate to develop uh, the contact between the Israeli parliament and the Norwegian parliament. And unfortunately, I uh, couldn't uh, succeed. It was a lot of uh, issues on the table, problems, I don't know. And I'm so happy to share with you that uh, last Friday, thanks to actually me for the invitation that we came together here. So I said to Rafi, this is our opportunity to go to the parliament, to meet our colleague, my colleague, uh, our partners, and let's uh, start again. And that's what we did. And thank God, uh, in the coming winter, we will host a delegation of a Norwegian parliamentarian in uh, the Israeli parliament. And uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, good uh, news. And I'm going to uh, inform uh, our speaker of the house. And I'm sure he will be very glad. So thank you very much for uh, this uh, opportunity. Um, uh, Israel, as I said, recognized the important uh, contribution uh, that uh, Norway made in the establishment uh, of uh, the Israeli state. Uh, relation between our two uh, countries have uh, remained uh, positive for uh, almost the entire period uh, since then, and the current government has shown a moderate and balanced uh, approach toward Israel in issues of uh, BDS. We in Israel appreciate uh, that. So as uh, the chairperson of the israel Norway Parliamentarian uh, Friendship uh, Group, I think it is right that we should strengthen the ties between our two countries as we share so many intrinsic values uh, together. Our shared values of un, uh, upholding uh, democracy, providing gender equality, where we, the Israeli, have to learn a lot uh, from you still, education and uh, culture, this is our issues uh, which uh, concern us uh, both, and we have growing ties of cooperation. There is uh, much uh, in Europe and in Scandinavia today which uh, worries me, and where I think that greater cooperation between our two countries could help improve exciting and future circumstances. I think that uh, there are politicians among us who could work uh, together and uh, leaders in the community and organizations like you, we can do it uh, together and combat issues which concern both our people. Last week I attended a session of the uh, European uh, Parliament and was due to address uh, the Assembly on the issue of the ever-growing uh, specter of anti-Semitism which has shown itself to have uh, imported into anti-Zionism. On to other uh, events, uh, this was postponed, unfortunately. But I think that even as we are gathered here today to celebrate uh, the immense achievements of the state of Israel over the past uh, 17, 70 years, it is of uh, paramount importance uh, to talk about the wave of anti-Semitic 
uh, events, an expression that has surged into the public discourse over the past uh, few years. We need to recognize these new types of anti-Semitism. We must acknowledge that ancient anti-Semitic tropes have returned. Just uh, two weeks ago, the people of Israel and Jews around the world remember the Holocaust, Shoah. Schools and universities, uh, factories and shops, every person who understood the gravity of the day stood to attention to hear the terribly cry of the Syrian searing through the silence to remind us of our past, but also remind us of our present, of our duty to care to our future. A week later, the sirens screamed out their message once again, as they do every year, to remind us of our fallen people, Jews, Christians, Druze, and Muslims. Those who have died protecting our loving country, or those killed through terror just because they were Israeli. As the psalm day came to an end and the faithful prayed prayers of thanks for, establish, for the establishment of uh, Israel, the entire country erupted into glorious carnival atmosphere to celebrate Israel's 70th anniversary. We saw a strange juxtaposition position of mourning and celebration, a collective memory together with the collective experience, dancing in the streets to celebrate a dream, a millennia years in the making but just 70 years old. The state of Israel was declared in 1948 but as a people, we have never stopped talking about, stop, stop talking about, praying for, yearning for our return to our capital city of Jerusalem. This is the chore that has bound the Jewish people together everywhere. My granny came from Afghanistan in the 1920, and my other grandmother came from a Bucharest uh, as a Zionist. And um, without uh, knowing, reading, and uh, writing, my granny from Afghanistan knew everything by heart, all the Bible. So it's years of years of praying and asking uh, from, uh, for a redemption. So all of us came suddenly, almost all, all, all of us came to Israel. And we had come to believe that the state was the manifestation of our Jewish identity. Logical, uh, providing solutions for many of the world's problems. We bred out of children's blood. A 21st century tragedy in a place devoid of any Jews and their ancient medieval blood libels are as strong as they ever were. And other issues, as you well known last, just in last week in, in Berlin, you name it. We have taken the brunt of blame for just holding on right to our 
tradition. So, no other people have been told that they rule the world are the reason for all evil. Poison wells, drink blood of children, and are the popters of leaders and governments. So, um, maybe we should leave it. It belongs to the past. Oh, you may say. That was in the middle, middle times, uh, the 1600s, uh, the 1800s. And now we have anti-Semitism, which has moved into the modern area. Unfortunately, on, um, of the things I, uh, are just as true today, either in the guise of make anti-Semitic hatred of Jews or in the politically correct, but just as dangerous, guys of anti-Zionism. Because who are we kidding? Who are you, what, you attacking when you attack Zionists? A Jew. There are different manifestations of the same age, all beliefs, and the results are the same. Delegitimation and boycott of uh, Israel in the name of political ideology with a con complete uh, disagreed of the consequences that this may have on the very people they profess to help because uh, the cause is not as important as attacking Israel on, in reality, the Jew. The dismension of racist information in new media, the increased cyber attacks against Jewish politicians in England from members of the Labour Party, the second largest party in Parliament, which are tastefully accepted the very same leader of that party who will who could very well become Prime Minister of Great Britain. In Poland, we have legislation denying the right to tell history as it was. We can no longer fight prejudices and racism by education, our future generations, about the truth of the Holocaust. We can't do it anymore, unfortunately, via this new legislation. The Polish government, just 70 years after the Holocaust, seeks to actively prose prosecute either individuals, academic institutions, or countries for telling the truth. And this is in itself a prejudiced act. This has become mainstream. This is not the area of cooks and warriors. Anti-Semitism is cool. Anti-Semitism is acceptable. It has found favor in both the far right and far left. This, in turn, has led to physical terror against our community. Parts of Europe have experienced serious terrorist attacks, and many other parts of Europe are in danger of for their unrest. Just two weeks ago, we saw two smaller incidents in New York and Berlin. Perhaps we should not get too upset. Do not overreact that uh, say. Do not wear your kippah in the street, hide your, hide your symbols. There are just pockets of anti-Semitic feelings in the Labour Party, says Jeremy Corbyn. It's not everyone. Do not overreact, they say, as thousands of Jews in France have left their homes or are scared to send their children to state schools. It is not 
so bad when an entire government who denies its historical past after all. Doesn't this remind you of something? Has the world learned anything over the past thousands of years, over the past 75 years? Our history is being denied, and our collective experience has become illegal. Here we are in 2018, and the specter of anti-Jewish sentiment is as strong as it has ever been. True we may not be facing systematic physical destruction, but we are facing systematic vilification, delegitimization, boycott, and antipathy. In Europe, our children study behind walls with armed protection. Our synagogues are cordoned of and armored vehicles stand outside. We are grateful for the protection, really grateful for, for the protection, but why should we need it? Here in Norway, we have seen automatic gunfire at a synagogue. In Malmo, Sweden, children at a synagogue party were bundled in a clear to escape Molotov cocktails and smashed windows. Attacked on places of Jewish worship was, as it's, uh, we saw 150 years ago, just as we saw 75 years ago. Our graves are smashed and disgraced just as they were 150 years ago just as we saw 75 years ago. Our shops are sprayed with whiskies and store windows smashed in Holland just like 75 years ago. And um, I ask myself why and what is going on here in 2018. Same happened. Violence acts against Jews has risen dramatically over the past year with 97 incident of attack in France alone. Where has it come from? How has it become acceptable again? And what has allowed this atmosphere to hate to be the norm? What was once the realm of fearing elements has become accepted truth and acceptable in every level of society. Attacks, verbal, cyber, physical, political, organized or lone wolf. All in the name of anti-Zionism or anti-colonialism or anti-capitalism. It's the same wolf in different ships clothing. An age-old hatred in a new guise. This uh, tactic, acceptance of anti-Jewish uh, rhetoric is the guise of anti-Zionism or anti-imperialism or anti-colonialism and its return. And from burying Jewish athletes at international events to burying Jewish gay rights activists from pink marches, the far left and the far right find a common language and propose when it's come to the Jews and they caught in it a, sil a shiny film of anti-Zionism. Just a few months ago, here in Norway, a group of Israeli dancers, amazing dancers, like dancers that you saw yesterday, were barred from taking part here in Norway at a feminist strip event for gender equality throat dance. The reason given to them, as I was told, 
was that they came from Israel and therefore represented a government who appears the Palestinian people. The dance group was made of just that, dancers, amazing dancer, believe me. Women coming to express their feminine identity through the wonderful international language of dance. As like Martha Graham said once, you can be Eastern or Burns or what have you, but a function of the body and the awareness of the body results in dance and you become a dancer, just a human being. And unfortunately, our dancer weren't invited. Here in Norway, the word Jew is a well-known pejorative. In England, the verb to Jew means to cheat, and Zio is another word for racist. Zionism as a vision of uh, redemption and respite for the Jewish people has become synonymous for many with facet racist behavior. This has a natural result. If it's acceptable to attack Jews verbally, then it's acceptable, then it is acceptable to bear them from participation in every pursuit, and then it's acceptable to attack their symbols, their synagogues, their cemeteries. The Jews of diaspora, such a teeny teeny, percentage of the world are being singled out for their Jewish, Jewishness. In Europe and in Scandinavia, where inclusive and tolerance are behind about as the new mantra, Jews are in hiding behind con concrete skirt of where traditional symbols. Scandinavian countries who loud religious freedom are also complicit in anti-Semitism by threatening to bar Jews from following their ancient traditions of circumstances or slaughter the meat they wish to eat. It has led to the being acceptable for Jews to be banned from performing, from competing under an Israeli flag, the national, our national flag. Those who claim that it is not them who carry out these attacks or they do not uh, subscribe to resist thought must examine the influence of new media. We have uh, become complacent and so we have become complicit. Our digital age means that we can just like an idea and sit back and watch the information superhighway of cyber pace, cyber pace has become a fast channel for spreading hatred, including anti-Semitism. We can say it is not our business and delete a post that spurred deception and incitement or completely ignore it and scroll down our phones for the next person to be take in and believe these lies. Technology has given us the tools to teach and to educate. Our digital age means that we can share knowledge and truth, speak out and call for justice. The world must not stand by and remain passive to incitement the two Jew and Zionists inter in intermingle when they are attacked, but suddenly spread when excuses are made. And excuses are being made 
everywhere. Why should authorizers say that throwing a Molotov cocktails at a synagogue is just high spirits, as they say in Sweden? That throwing a lady off a balcony while shooting Allah Akbar is just domestic violence. Terrible atrocities are happening everywhere. The voices of in, uh, intolerance from both the right towards the stranger and the left towards those who they see as not agreeing with them is getting louder by the day. Thankfully, there are a few countries in Europe who are beginning to street this toxic atmosphere. And here in Norway, I am happy to see that the issue of anti-Semitism has been addressed in a serious and systematic set of guidelines for school. Hate speech has been identified and finally included anti-Semitic hate speech as a crime too. The Norwegian government has set up programs to educate and inform, and that is tremendous. I would be delighted to see more cooperation between our two countries on this issue. And I call for more Norwegian politicians to visit in Israel in order to truly understand and recognize the complex and challenging reality that we are facing Israel every day. For there is a fine line between critici criticizing and the politics of democracy, democratically elected foreign government and attaching blame for that foreign government's actions to the local Jewish community or Jews as a whole. Crossing this fine has dire and sometimes unforeseen consequences. You may even be upset that I uh, choose to address uh, such a dark issue at a celebration event, but the two go hand in hand. Despite our pride at the 70 years of achievement in the state of uh, Israel, recent surveys show that anti-Semitism against the Jewish people in Europe is at the highest level since Holocaust. Just as we celebrate Yom HaShoah a week before Independence Day, and we remember our fallen day every day before we celebrate our independence, we remember that we have responsibility to our past and to our future. We have a duty of care to ensure that we are no longer attacked just for being who we are. We are no longer attacked just for being. There should be no place for hunting one particular minority group and no place for boycotting one particular group. Hate crimes, incitement, attacks, and violence against other minority groups are seen as unacceptable. The people who do this are punished for doing so. What is the difference for anti-Semitic incitement or attack? Good people of Norway, the wonderful people from the MIF and the International Christian Embassy in Israel that we are going uh, uh, to uh, be their guest also uh, tonight. I would like to, to thank you for all your uh, work, but we have to create work together and elaborate our work. I would like to, to thank the hand 
the head of the friendship group of Norwegian parliamentarian member of parliament, Hans Friedrich, that uh, uh, was here also for his work and promise words, as I share you in the beginning. I think that I'm right in saying that our two countries both share the acceptance that terror is not only confined to the Jewish people, but tolerance of xenophobia and attacking Jews who do not share values leads to horrific, horrific violence leads to terror and has led to terror. Our world is changing. The world is foreign news alliance, as I speak, by the enemy of terrorism and vilification and delegitimization is no longer just against Israel and the Jews. It is against the other, the new, the different. Tactic acceptance of unsocial behavior in the name of tolerance and consequence which need to be addressed. And we have, I think, a duty to care, to remember the past and implement the lesson we have learned into our present and future lives. We have a duty of care to speak up, point out, and demand that this should stop before it gets out of hand once more. In Europe, there is beginning to be turn of zero to tolerance to anti-Semitism, with real and magnificent debates surfing where just last year it was brushed under the carpet. Let us hope that he's not, this is not too late to understand that the rise of anti-Semitism is an indicator of what can happen in the world and has happened before. It has to be stopped. Together, join me and the people of Israel and help us combat the sweeping tide of hate and toxic anti-Semitism which is surging around Europe and the world. We need to celebrate our achievements, of course, as we celebrate the wonderful achievements of the State of Israel, but remain alert our common future and work processive for a world where we can be safe in the knowledge that events do not repeat themselves. Collective memory should not be allowed to face. History should not be re-returned. Re, re People should not remain silent. As I stand here as a very proud Israeli in this wonderful occasion where we are so captivated by Israel's amazing achievements, I would like to wish both our people and the people of the world that over the next 70 years together, we will strive to build a future which will be the history we would be proud of for our great-grandchildren to remember. Thank you very much.